February 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Leviticus chapter 16 and 17 from the Old Testament. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons when they approached the presence of the Lord and died. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron your brother that he must not enter at any time into the holy place inside the veil canopy in front of the atonement plate that is on the ark, so that he may not die, for I will appear in the cloud over the atonement plate. In this way Aaron is to enter into the sanctuary, with a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He must put on a holy linen tunic, linen leggings are to cover his body, and he is to wrap himself with a linen sash and wrap his head with a linen turban. They are holy garments, so he must bathe his body in water and put them on. He must also take two male goats from the congregation of the Israelites for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Then Aaron is to present the sin offering bowl, which is for himself and is to make atonement on behalf of himself and his household. He must then take the two goats and stand them before the Lord at the entrance of the meeting tent. And Aaron is to cast lots over the two goats, one lot for the Lord and one lot for Azazel. Aaron must then present the goat which has been designated by Lot for the Lord, and he is to make it a sin offering. But the goat which has been designated by Lot for Azazel is to be stood alive before the Lord to make atonement on it by sending it away to Azazel into the wilderness. Aaron is to present the sin offering bowl which is for himself, and he is to make atonement on behalf of himself and his household. He is to slaughter the sin offering bowl which is for himself and take a censer full of coals of fire from the altar before the Lord, and a full double handful of finely ground fragrant incense, and bring them inside the veil canopy. He must then put the incense on the fire before the Lord, and the cloud of incense will cover the atonement plate, which is above the ark of the testimony, so that he will not die. Then he is to take some of the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it with his fingers on the eastern face of the atonement plate, and in front of the atonement plate he is to sprinkle some of the blood seven times with his finger. He must then slaughter the sin offering goat, which is for the people. He is to bring its blood inside the veil canopy, and he is to do with its blood just as he did to the blood of the bull. He is to sprinkle it on the atonement plate and in front of the atonement plate. So he is to make atonement for the holy place from the impurities of the Israelites and from their transgressions with regard to all their sins, and thus he is to do for the meeting tent which resides with them in the midst of their impurities. Nobody is to be in the meeting tent when he enters to make atonement in the holy place until he goes out, and he has made atonement on his behalf, on behalf of his household, and on behalf of the whole assembly of Israel. Then he is to go out to the altar which is before the Lord and make atonement for it. He is to take some of the blood of the bull and some of the blood of the goat and put it all around on the horns of the altar. Then he is to sprinkle on it some of the blood with his finger seven times and cleanse and consecrate it from the impurities of the Israelites. When he has finished purifying the holy place, the meeting tent, and the altar, he is to present the live goat. Aaron is to lay his two hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of the Israelites and all their transgressions in regard to all their sins. And thus he is to put them on the head of the goat and send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a man standing ready. The goat is to bear on itself all their iniquities into an inaccessible land, so he is to send the goat away in the wilderness. Aaron must then enter the meeting tent and take off the linen garments which he had put on when he entered the sanctuary and leave them there. Then he must bathe his body in water in a holy place, put on his clothes, and go out and make his burnt offering and the people's burnt offering. So he is to make atonement on behalf of himself and the people. Then he is to offer up the fat of the sin offering and smoke on the altar. And the one who sent the goat away to Azazel must wash his clothes, bathe his body in water, and afterward he may re-enter the camp. The bowl of the sin offering and the goat of the sin offering whose blood was brought to make atonement in the holy place, must be brought outside the camp, and their hide, their flesh, and their dung must be burnt up. 
and the one who burns them must wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and afterward he may re-enter the camp. This is to be a perpetual statute for you. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you must humble yourself and do no work of any kind. Both the native citizen and the foreigner who resides in your midst. For on this day atonement is to be made for you to cleanse you from all your sins. You must be clean before the Lord. It is to be a Sabbath of complete rest for you, and you must humble yourselves. It is a perpetual statute. The priest who is anointed and ordained to act as high priest in place of his father is to make atonement. He is to put on the linen garments, the holy garments, and he is to purify the most holy place. He is to purify the meeting tent and the altar, and he is to make atonement for the priest and for all the people of the assembly. This is to be a perpetual statute for you to make atonement for the Israelites for all their sins once a year. So he did just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to Aaron, his sons, and all the Israelites, and tell them, This is the word that the Lord has commanded. Blood guilt will be accounted to any man from the house of Israel who slaughters an ox or a lamb or a goat inside the camp or outside the camp, but has not brought it to the entrance of the meeting tent to present it as an offering to the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord. He has shed blood so that man will be cut off from the midst of his people. This is so that the Israelites will bring their sacrifices that they are sacrificing in the open field to the Lord at the entrance of the meeting tent to the priest and sacrifice them there as peace offering sacrifices to the Lord. The priest is to splash the blood on the altar of the Lord at the entrance of the meeting tent and offer the fat up in smoke for a soothing aroma to the Lord. So they must no longer offer their sacrifices to the goat demons, acting like prostitutes by going after them. This is to be a perpetual statute for them throughout their generations. You are to say to them, Any man from the house of Israel or from the foreigners who reside in their midst who offers a burnt offering or a sacrifice, but does not bring it to the entrance of the meeting tent to offer it to the Lord, that person will be cut off from his people. Any man from the house of Israel or from the foreigners who reside in their midst, who eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats the blood, and I will cut him off from the midst of his people. For the life of every living thing is in the blood." So I myself have assigned it to you on the altar to make atonement for your lives, for the blood makes atonement by means of the life. Therefore I have said to the Israelites, No person among you is to eat blood, and no resident foreigner who lives among you is to eat blood. Any man from the Israelites or from the foreigners who reside in their midst, who hunts a wild animal or a bird that may be eaten, must pour out its blood and cover it with soil. For the life of all flesh is its blood. So I have said to the Israelites, you must not eat the blood of any living thing, because the life of every living thing is its blood. All who eat it will be cut off. Any person who eats an animal that has died of natural causes, or an animal torn by beast, whether a native citizen or a foreigner, must wash his clothes, bathe in water, and be unclean until evening. Then he becomes clean. But if he does not wash his clothes and does not bathe his body, he will bear his punishment for iniquity. God, I just love the parts in the Old Testament that foreshadow the coming of your son to be the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate lamb, the ultimate blood that will be shed for our sins. In here you talk about, so I myself have assigned it to you on the altar to make atonement for your lives, for the blood makes atonement by means of the life. And I just get so excited at the foreshadowing of your son to come. That you're willing to give up your only son, to have him come down here and live on earth to experience what we experience and then ultimately be betrayed by the same people you're talking to right here. Their ancestors to be ultimately betrayed and sacrificed on a cross for all of us.
I will never, no matter how much I study, fully understand the complete sacrifice of your son. I do know I am humbled by it. I do know it brings me to my knees many, many times in my life. That you would do that for somebody like me. That the more I catch glimpses of just how big you are and how grace-filled you are and how big your mercy really is, the less and less I wonder about that statement in the Bible that we're made in your image. <laughs> I want to see so much more of you in my life than what I see now. God, as we read through the Old Testament, part of your word, let us always be looking forward to the coming Christ, to the story of your Son who saved us from all of our sins. Because of how much you love us, because of how much you want a relationship with us, because you care about us in a way that nobody here on earth ever has. That you're willing to give up your son's life to make that blood atonement for our life so we can spend it with you in eternity. God, I just love you so much and I don't even know how much that means to you because it doesn't even compare to how much you love us. But I do know that I love you very much. And today, God, let my life be pleasing to you. Let the words from my mouth be pleasing to you. The emotions in my heart and the thoughts in my head. Let me reflect some small part of who you are. In your son's name we pray. Amen.